Let's dig into analytics for insights to grow your traffic and sales, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a link to grab a copy of our UTM builder. More on that in a bit. Now, the good news is you don't have to spend the next five or six hours learning what the heck a data layer is and setting up conversion events. Everything we are about to cover will work out of the box without touching any more code after, of course, installing analytics. So if you haven't done that already, link in the cards in the description to a video to do that. Now, when you first set up your Google Analytics account, you can always click the admin panel down here to come back to your main settings. So of course you can access your accounts, you can create a new account. Typically you'll have one account per company or per client. Then your properties represent your different domains. So normally, even if you have subdomains, you'll have one property for everything. And then if you have multiple subdomains, you could create a property for each one of those if you really wanted to get fancy. Now, one important note before we jump into all of the reporting and fun things, you need to have Google Analytics 4, which is the new version. It's been over a year, so we should stop calling it new. It's just Google Analytics 4. I'm the one calling it new. And then Universal, which is the original one, and or not the original one, the older one. And you need both because Google Analytics 4 still doesn't have important data, as you're about to see. So to create one or the other, when you click Create Property in your account, by default, you'll create a Google Analytics 4 account. But if you want to create a Universal one, all you have to do is click on Show Advanced Settings, click the switch, and you can either create a four and a universal at the same time, or you can just create a universal property. Again, link in the cards and the description to a full-blown video that goes through how to install analytics using Tag Manager and all of your other tracking codes as well. So we'll switch back and forth between the two because you still need both. So with that, let's go ahead, jump right in and answer the question, where the heck are people coming from? <laughs> Which is pretty much the primary reason we want Google Analytics in the first place. So from anywhere inside of your Google Analytics account to get to your reports, you just come over to the left-hand side and click on reports. And then here we are going to click on acquisition and we're going to go to traffic acquisition. Now, user acquisition and traffic acquisition, they're going to show you about the same data. Really the only difference is the user reports are based upon someone showing up to your site for the first time. So if you're trying to figure out where are new visitors coming from, user acquisition is the way to go, and it's going to be the exact same process. I like using traffic though, because I'd like to see a bigger overall picture of how people are coming to our site. So here we go. I'll go ahead and change this to, let's say this calendar year. And then at the bottom here, I'll go ahead and click this arrow so we have more space to see our table. You'll see that it has grouped our different visitors based upon different types of places they may have come from. Now, what I like to do is click on channel grouping here and then click on session source. Now, thinking about source and medium, this is going to set you up for success when it comes to everything else, especially when it comes to UTM links. So I've selected source, and now we can see the exact platforms or websites that people are coming from. Now, I do a lot here on YouTube, so most of the traffic for this site is coming from YouTube, and you can see some search engines and a little trickle, like four people from Facebook for some reason. And for most of us, this data really isn't gonna tell us much of anything, because for the most part, we know where we're spending the majority of our time creating content or running ads. So this isn't going to help us all that much. But if you are running ads and you're creating content, then you can come to this plus button here and select session acquisition, and then go ahead and select session medium. Then we're going to have a second column that's going to separate our traffic based upon whether it was organic or whether it was paid. Now, no paid traffic's being run to this website right now, so or, or this domain, I should say. So everything just says organic website or referral. And even if you're not running paid ads, there's one more thing in this report that's going to be incredibly helpful and valuable. So come back up to session medium here, and for session acquisition, we're going to select session campaign. And this is going to be where Google Analytics really, really shines and where we're going to get into something called UTM links, which ironically, the UTM builder linked up in the description is, I guess, the top traffic for this year for some reason. We haven't been promoting that at all. Anyway, so what this is doing now is it's segmenting our traffic based upon groupings of links. So you can actually, if you have a specific product or service, you can create special tracking links and tell Google Analytics that, hey, if someone clicks on this link, it's promoting this offer or it's promoting this sales funnel. 
And so what you're seeing here is any link that dealt with promoting the UTM builder has been aggregated together. So you can see we got 175 unique visitors for a total of 244 sessions. So unique visitors is 175. So this just means some people came back twice, right? To the same page. And engage sessions is actually something that's going to be important because engage sessions tells you how many of your unique visitors actually stayed more than 10 seconds. So you can see we had 175 people but only 118 of them stayed around longer than 10 seconds. So you really want to look at the engaged column because this gives you the most accurate, clear picture of how many people actually came to the site and then stayed long enough for it to actually make a difference. Now, unfortunately, this is where Google Analytics 4 data ends. And this is why you still have to have universal analytics. So I will link up in the cards and the description to a super deep dive video on UTM links and how to actually create campaigns and start organizing your traffic. So you can tell Google Analytics how to classify traffic. But let's go ahead and quickly jump over to a universal analytics property. And I've gone to acquisition, campaigns, all campaigns, just to show you why it's so important to still have both. Now here in the campaign column, you'll see that we have a similar list of campaigns as we did inside of our, universe, our, our Google Analytics 4 property. So inside of Universal, we can actually start looking inside of our campaigns for more information. So as an example here, we can come up to secondary dimension, we can click on advertising, and then I can click add content. And when I do, it's going to load up the specific videos, or if it's a long string like this, the specific emails that have been driving traffic. And so if I were to click into SFO here, our sales funnel organizer, and then I tell it to sort by ad content. So now I'm looking at all of, these are all YouTube videos with the exception of free tools. So these are all individual YouTube videos. And I've told Google Analytics, hey, take all of these link clicks and put them together inside of this one campaign because I wanna look at them together. And then I can break down even further and say, okay, which specific video is getting the most clicks and which specific video is actually driving the most sales. Now, quick disclaimer, the sales part we'll get to at the very end, that is going to require some code. Unfortunately, there's no way to set that up out of the box, but I'm just showing you what's possible once you start getting a little more advanced. However, when it comes to segmenting your traffic and data by campaigns and then by specific blog post or ad or YouTube video, you can set all of this up without any coding whatsoever. So link in the cards and the description, full-blown UTM builder guide, and we even created a free tool to make this an absolute breeze so you can start getting data like this. But what's really cool is I can see F14 and F34 here generated some sales, while M141 didn't generate any. It got a lot of clicks, well, comparatively, right? But no one bought. And so in the future, when I come back here, I know, you know what? If I want to promote this particular offer, I should make more videos like F14 and M134 and less videos like M141. And I can tell you from personal experience, marketing becomes a no-brainer when you have this level of information because I no longer have to guess what type of ad or what type of video to make if I'd like to generate some sales. Now, 270, you know, $257 isn't anything to write home about, but it does help a lot when it comes to content creation. You're like, I don't really know what I should make to actually get some sales. Well, now we have previous data to tell us exactly what to make in order to get those sales. So again, link in the cards and the description. I know I'm a broken record to that UTM builder and the tutorial that will show you exactly how to set up all of those tracking links. And so that does it for answering the first question of where are people coming from? So now we want to answer the question, who are they, <laughs> right? So jumping back over to our Google Analytics 4 property, we can go ahead and click on our reports here and then expand the menu again and we can click on demographics. I know what I'm clicking here, demographics. And then we can click on demographics overview. And when we do, you'll be able to see a breakdown of the countries of where people are physically located. And then of course, you could click here and get a much more detailed view of these specific countries. And you can even start filtering out by specific cities. This is really helpful if you're a local based business and you're in a just a state or a county or really small geographic area. This can be really helpful in figuring out which specific cities and neighborhoods 
people are actually finding your website from or you should be targeting more with your traffic. However, this is not all that helpful when it comes to broad demographic information as opposed to interests, age, and gender. Because if we come back over to our demographics overview, you'll see that location data is here, but that's it. There's no interest, there's no gender, there's no age. Language, sure, that's, that's helpful, but you probably know what language people are speaking because that's what your website is, right? So what you have to do is, yeah, you guessed it, go back to Universal Analytics. So to navigate back to Universal Analytics, we'll go ahead and click the down arrow at the top. You can see your accounts and properties, and I'll go ahead and click on the Universal Analytics version of this particular web website. <laughs> I said web, web page, website. It goes on all of your pages. And so we're inside of Google Universal Analytics now, and I can click on our audience here and click on demographics, just go to overview. It's always hard to click and talk at the same time. And then you'll see that we have some demographic information. Now, something to note here is this is 46% of users. So this is telling us that of all of the people that showed up, this represents 46% of them because this is just Google saying, hey, we don't know every single person on, on the web who came to your site, which is a good thing because if this was 100%, that would be really creepy. <laughs> Google already knows enough about us, right? And then of course you have some gender information as well. Now there's one other thing that can be very helpful if you want to run traffic in the future or you just want to learn a little bit more about who's visiting your site other than just age and gender. So we can click on interests here. And when we click on overview, again, make sure that you pay attention to this. So this is only 51% of the people who showed up to our site. This isn't everyone being categorized. These are categories, affinity and in market and some other categories too, but mostly these two that you can use inside of Google Ads. So when you want to go find more site visitors like the ones you already have, you can come to this report. In market is the place to start. And I'd say, okay, business services, advertising, and marketing. That makes sense given I run a marketing YouTube channel and ad agency, right? So inside of Google Ads, we could say, hey, hey Google, go target people in this category because we know that our current website visitors are in this category. So it can save you a lot of headache when it comes to researching. And you can also use these for YouTube ads and display remarketing as well. It doesn't have to be just Google search. So that does it for who is coming to your site. So we know where they're coming from, who they are. Now let's go ahead and talk about what on earth are they doing once they're there. Now this is going to bleed a little bit into some of the advanced things you can do. But again, we'll just save that till the last section and what to do. So we'll jump back over to our Google Analytics 4 property here. And this is the same website. I'm just jumping back and forth between Universal and Google Analytics 4. So both codes are on the same site. And to do that, we can come over to reports here. So I'll click on reports and then we'll select engagement and pages and screens. Now you'll notice that I'm just being very selective here. We're just kind of 80, 20 in this whole process. You don't have to go through every single report. And even most of the reports that we've gone through may not even be helpful to you in terms of making better content or finding more customers. So pages and screens, we can come down here, we'll go ahead and hide that and we can see our most popular pages. Now you'll see some of these are not, some of these are not set. So all we need to do is click this plus button here, page and screen, page path and screen. And so, or this is definitely not what it's called, page path and screen class. But the page path will tell you the actual URL. So when you have things like not set, you know, I don't know what page that is. I don't know what page that is either, right? So then we know, okay, this is the product page. This is a landing page. And then of course we can go back to our page builder or WordPress site and fix it so that the page title actually shows up. Now this really only tells us where people are, what page people are coming to first. And while it's really cool that this report can show us what pages are most popular on our site, what pages are getting the most new visitors, it would also be cool if we could see what happens after they come to our site, right? What And the flow of traffic on our site. And to do that, we can don't have to install anything fancy. We can come up here to explore. If I can get my mouse to actually click on it, there we go. <laughs> And then you're going to choose something called path exploration. There's a lot you can do in here. We're just gonna go super basic for now. 
So on path exploration, once it loads, I guess my internet's just being slow here. One eternity later. And once it loads, we'll have the event name session start. We'll go and leave that alone. That's just saying the trigger for this particular flow is someone comes to our website. <laughs> and then for our event name, we can go ahead and change it to page title. And then it will show us a similar list of pages that we just saw on our pages and screens report, right? So when we click on one of these, I'll go and click on our home page here. Since the first one is a landing page, nobody goes anywhere after that. We can see the pages that people go to after they come to the home page. So this can help us improve the home page. If we're seeing a lot of people going to free tools, then maybe we should include that somewhere else on the home page as opposed to just in the navigation menu since that seems to be what people actually are interested in, right? And then of course you can click through, let's say they go to consulting and then it seems like they go over to free tools or back to the home page, right? And then six go to not set. And so this can kind of help you understand what people are doing on your main website. And it can, of course, help you figure out, oh, people keep going to this one page, so maybe they need more information about it and we should put it closer to the front so it doesn't take them so long to find that information. And so that does it for answering the three main questions. Where are they coming from? Who are they? And then what are they doing with this flow once they've hit our website? And of course, there are other different uh, reports that you can create out of this, you can get really fancy, but that is just kind of the basics out of the box, things that work with Google Analytics Universal and of course, Google Analytics 4. Now this last section, who's converting? That is, who is coming to our website and actually joining our email list or who is actually purchasing our products and services? This last part, as cool as it is to see a table like this with e-commerce numbers, does require some custom coding and installing. So when we come over to our, oh my gosh, I cannot get this to stay. If we come over here, configure conversions, this is going to be where you're going to start setting up custom events. So I'll link up in the cards and the description to a crazy deep dive video from the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where he walks you through step-by-step -step exactly how to start accessing your data layer and actually start creating some custom events. So you can start tracking how many people are joining your email list. You can track how many people are actually buying and the transaction value so that you can have reports similar to the ones you've seen in this video, where you know exactly how much a particular campaign or video or link click is actually generating you. And so that's all there is to it, to Google Analytics. So if you have any questions, you feel like something was left out, go ahead and comment below. I still read and reply to every single one. And make sure you click that link in the cards in the description to the UTM Builder video, because that is the very first thing you should do after watching this video, set up your UTM links, start collecting that data. And then of course we have the UTM builder linked up in the description, same tool we use to stay organized and not pull our hair out, creating tracking links all the time. So hit that like button, subscribe for more marketing guides to grow your business just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.